the Europeans controlled mainly the coastal areas of Africa by the early 1800s. While European countries ended the importation of slaves, Arab countries still imported slaves, also internally African kingdoms enslaved other Africans. The Europeans started to import palm oil for lubricants of machines in the early 1800s. Africans created their own plantations using slaves in West Africa for palm oil. Africans also had slave plantations to grow spices in East Asia, which were sold to the Arabs. The western part of Africa was Islamic. The leaders were cooperating with the Europeans and tried to implement western-style reforms in government, particularly in western law. Islamic conservatives wanted the law to be based on Islamic Sharia law. Islamic Sufi movements set up teaching people in rural areas away from their western-oriented cities. The religious instructors and students created the origin of jihad movements or a holy war against infidels, including Islamic leaders that were being oriented toward Western ideas. Usaman Donfodio created campaign against the emir of today's northern Nigeria. Notice in the orange is today's Nigeria. In the north is a very arid area. This is where the Muslims are located. He built up an army and created the Sokoto Caliph. This led to other jihadist movements in northern Africa and led to more Islamic adherents. Fodio would die a natural death and his caliphate became decentralized with local emirs taking control. The British were able to defeat this divided force and took control of modern day Nigeria. As the French moved inland, they would go in this green area and the Samoris would be based on the Senegal River as well as the upper Niger River. As the French moved inland on the Senegal River to create an empire, Samori Touré created his own army. Samori's army could not stand up to the French, so he instituted guerrilla warfare. However, cut off from supplies, the French eventually captured Samori and sent him into exile. In southern Africa, the Zulu peoples had been fragmented politically, much like the earlier Mongols in Asia. Shaka unified the various Zulu tribes under his rule and chose his generals on merit rather than tribal-based. Thus, a decentralized kingdom became centralized. He attacked other chiefdoms to enlarge his empire, mainly with violence. It is almost the same strategy as the Mongol leader Genghis Khan, but not as bloody. The British had gained the colony of Cape Town during the Napoleonic Wars from the Dutch. As the English moved inland, this pushed the Dutch Africaners further inland. Here you can see a, a map of Africa directly at the bottom at the south. You see the Cape Colony. The movement of the Dutch Afrikaners was known as the Great Track and lasted from 1834 to 1836. The Afrikaners moved inland into the purple area just north of Cape Colony. The Boers encountered the Zosa chiefdoms and took their traditional cattle pastures. Some Zosa converted to Christianity and traded with the British and Afrikaners. However, traditionalists did not agree. However, a fatal disease killed many of the Zosa cattle, which were key to their economy and society. Some Zosa turned to a young girl, Nankawuse, who stated that her dead ancestors had contacted her and instructed the people to kill their remaining cattle as a sacrifice and departed warriors would come back to defeat the white colonists. The result was the tragic Zosa cattle killing. Ironically, some of this belief was due to the influence of Methodist missionaries that spoke of the resurrection of Christ and the return of the Messiah. So therefore, they started this belief that these warriors would come back from the dead and save them. Over 100,000 Zosa died of starvation, and the British easily took over the remainder of the Zosa kingdom. It is interesting to note that the British exiled Nankawuse to Robben Island off the coast of Cape Town, where Nelson Mandela was sent much later. The discovery of diamonds in 1868 and gold in 1884 
led the British further into the interior into conflict with the Boers. In 1879, the British ordered the Zulus to disarm, but they refused. The Zulus won an initial skirmish, but a large force came back with, for the British. The Zulus marched an offensive against the British lines, but they were no match for machine guns. In 1880, the British sacked the Zulu capital, thus local African resistance was futile against new European weaponry. The Europeans would conquer almost all of Africa with the exception of Ethiopia and Liberia.